Hi, and welcome to this module on string manipulation. This is our third module in our fundamental series. So if you haven't checked out our previous two modules on atoms and lists, please feel free to do so. In this module, we'll be focusing on strings. And when we talk about strings, we mean textual data. We've also seen this as a, as a list of characters in Q. And this is such a commonly used data type. Um, a lot of the time, your data will be in this format. And it's really important early on to learn how to work with strings manipulate them, parse what you might need from them. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this module. So you'll see in your contents on the left hand side here, we'll start by looking at creating and printing strings. Then we look at string manipulation. So cutting, creating strings, um, string padding and casing. And then we'll finish up looking at how we can do string comparison and searching in strings. So let me just hide the contents. So firstly, We've got this string keyword that we can apply to any Q entity. And what it does is produce a text representation, which is suitable for when we're printing out to the console or equally when we want to print that to a log file, for example. So if we run this cell, we see first example here is running string on a long. And we just see if that's indicated with these double quotes around our number. Then we're also able to run string directly on this operation, which is six times five. And then we're also running string on our inbuilt date function, which basically gets us today's date. Um, we can also create strings manually by just typing our characters and adding double quotes around them. So we'll show a few different examples of that. The first one here is a list. We see we've got hello, hello world separated by a space. Then in the second example here, we're just showing we can create a string like this, and we can also create it with our round brackets and then separating each character by a semicolon and their equivalent. We see that with our match operator, we're getting one B returned. Um, and then the final one here, we're showing hello, hello world. Um, we've actually created two separate lists of characters here. So it's asking us the question, are these two lines equivalent? Um, and no, they're not. We can see that visually to start with. So first of all, this is on one line on the horizontal. And then this second example is split over two lines and it's vertical. So we did see in our last list module that this indicates that we've got a list of lists or otherwise known as general or mixed lists. So if we look at the answer to that question, we can see, nope, they're not. The first item one is a list of characters. That's what we thought. Um, and then we know our second one is a list of lists. So we can just prove that again with our old friend, the type command. So if we run type on our first one, we get 10 H, which is positive. So we know it's a list and we know 10 equates to our character on our data type section. We just go back and remind ourselves of that. So if we go to 10, we see the, oh, hey, that's character. Happy, happy with that now. And then if I run type on the second statement, I'm getting zero H. We know that's our general or mixed list. And then I can use my each command again to get the type of every sub element of that list. So I'm getting type first of this one here, and then I'm getting type of this one here. Okay. So it's a short exercise here. So we're asking you to create a string with the current time as a timestamp. That will look very similar to when we did that with our date above. So if you can remember the command to get our current timestamp, um, and if not, you can always head to the reference card and check out the dot Z namespace. Okay, once you're happy with that, let's move on and look at displaying our output in Q. As we mentioned, strings are used for logging and that includes for debugging messages. So in order to write and display these, we first need to know how can we actually display output? So we know we can display output by just writing it in our cell and we can run that cell and it's printed out to the terminal. But note when we add a semicolon to the end of a line, we actually repress the output or, or silence it. So you'll see hello and world are returned and farewell and cruel are not. So what happens if we wanted to return these? How would we do that? So we could use our print function, also known as the display function, and that's zero end bang, which would be placed in front of the expression that we want to print out. So you can see here, I've got a semicolon at the end, but because I've got this print function in front, it's basically telling um, the interpreter, I really want to print this um, and it kind of ignores the semicolon. Okay, so we're asking here, what would we see if we remove the semicolon? 
So let's see what happens. So if we remove it, what happens actually is it gets returned twice. So it's getting returned once because we don't have a semicolon here, just like any normal expression up here would be returned. And then the second time it's been returned is because we've um, intentionally put the print function in front. So another way to do something very similar is to use our standard out function. And we can use that by running one or minus one in front of our expression. So you can see here we've got minus one and then we've got the string hello world. Then we've got a semicolon and then we're defining a variable a to be other and stuff. So if we run this, we'll see we get our message printed out to the console. And then if we check what a is, we'll see that that's also been defined. Execution doesn't stop at the end here. We're also able to define this variable in the same line. So minus two works in a very similar way. If we run this, we'll see what that looks like. So in Jupyter, errors are indicated by a red band, and that's what differentiates using minus one and minus two here. And again, we're seeing we're able to run expressions at the end of our line um, the same way with standard error. Okay, so we've mentioned we can use one and minus one and two and minus two. Um, let's show the difference between those. So to do that, we've got a short while loop here. We just have a counter of zero and then we're going up as far as three. And then we're gonna print out this first statement, which is the string starting with parameter joined. Remember this comma is our join operator to X, which will be our counter. And then we're gonna also print out finished um, after that. So let's run this and see what happens. So can you tell the difference between one and minus one? Um, Pretty obvious here. One does not add a new line and minus one does. So whether you want to add a new line or you want to continue logging on the same line, um, you can choose to use one or minus one. So if everything here was minus one, what would happen? Let's check it out. You'd see we'd get new lines for everything added. Okay, so you can try out some of these for yourself and I'll see you in the next video.